When the overcurrent relay senses fault current, it will operate irrespective of the direction of the current flow. Quite often, we would like the relay to operate for current flow in one direction only. Let me show you why. This example shows the high voltage bus in a distribution substation. It is fed from sub-transmission lines which are part of a continuous loop. In this arrangement, current may flow in or out of either sub-transmission line depending upon conditions or system configuration in other parts of the loop. Now, suppose a fault occurs on line A. Fault current will flow from line B through the bus to feed the fault on line A in addition to the load on the bus. The overcurrent relay on line A will sense the overcurrent situation and begin to operate according to its inverse time characteristic. But the current in line B has also increased to feed the fault. Therefore, its own overcurrent relay will also sense the high level current and commence the tripping process. In fact, line B is also feeding the distribution load and therefore passes greater current than A. If the B relay trips out line B, the substation is left without any power supply at all. We can avoid this by using directional overcurrent relays, device number 67. Now, with a line A fault, the directional element blocks the overcurrent relay on line B from tripping when current flow is into the bus, but it will allow operation of overcurrent relay A to trip when current flow is out of the bus. For both of these lines, the correct tripping direction is when current flow is out of the bus into the line. In the case of a bus fault, current will flow into the bus from both feeders. Then both overcurrent relays will be blocked from operation by their respective directional relays. The fault would be cleared by other protection relays tripping out the same breakers. A clear case of zone overlap. The directional element controls tripping by superimposing its operation on that of the overcurrent relay. You will remember that the time overcurrent relay is fitted with a shorted shading coil on one leg of the electromagnet. This is to provide the driving force. The shorting circuit is fitted with a contact which is operated by the directional element. When current flow is in the tripping direction, this contact remains closed and the overcurrent relay can operate. However, if current flow reverses, then the directional element opens the contact, so preventing operation of the time over current relay. Similarly, the directional element also operates a contact in the instantaneous relay tripping circuit to allow tripping only when current flow is in the designated tripping direction. There are several different types of directional relay, but they all work on the principle of comparing the direction of current flow with some fixed reference, which may be voltage or current. To be more precise, it is usual to compare the phase angle of the current in relation to that of the reference. The important point is that the polarity of the reference quantity, be it voltage or current, must not change even under different fault conditions. For example, if current is used as the polarizing quantity, it can be obtained from a CT located in the grounded neutral of a Y-connected transformer. In this simple arrangement, the directional element receives reference voltage from the VT on the bus. Current is measured by the CT in the protected line. In normal operation, the phase angle of the current may be up to, say, 20 degrees lag. But if the direction of current flow reverses, then the phase angle will change by 180 degrees. This very large difference is easy for the relay to detect and activate the directional element. One common type of directional relay is the induction cylinder type shown here. The aluminum or copper cylinder takes up a stationary position 
depending upon the fluxes developed in the electromagnet. One of the coils is receiving input from the reference voltage or current, while the other is receiving input from the CT of the protected circuit. When current flow is in the selected non-tripping direction, the two fluxes set up the cylinder so that its contacts block operation. Now, if the flow of primary current reverses, then the aluminum cylinder will immediately take up a new position. Its contacts will now allow rotation of the time over current disk, and the relay can operate. It will also close the permissive contact in the instantaneous relay tripping circuit. This constitutes directional control of the overcurrent relay. Of course, there are various other methods for achieving the same result, but the concept is the same. When current flows in the tripping direction, the directional element allows the overcurrent relay to operate. When current flows in the opposite direction, that is, the non-tripping direction, then the directional relay will prevent operation of the overcurrent relays, both time overcurrent and instantaneous. Obviously, the actual tripping and blocking directions can be reversed by simply changing the polarity of the connections. In this particular relay that we've been looking at, the instantaneous overcurrent element is of a different type to that discussed in the previous segment. It works on the induction cup principle and is in fact quite similar to the directional unit. The secondary current from the CT is passed through these electromagnetic windings. A capacitor is wired into the circuit of one of the coils so as to provide a phase difference between the two fluxes and in turn produce turning motion on the cylinder. The spring restrains movement of the cylinder. However, as soon as the current flowing through the coils increases above the set pickup value, then the induction cylinder will rotate and close its trip contacts. In this unit, only a few millimeters of rotation are required so that the tripping times are extremely short, about 20 milliseconds. Clearly, the directional element plays a very important part in coordination and selectivity of the system protection schemes. We'll be talking a lot more about application of these relays in future tapes. For now, time for a break. Please switch off the tape and review this material in your workbook. Thank you.